You're listening to the Empowered Equestrian Podcast. In this episode, I'm chatting with my friend, Joanna Bornowski of The Wild Thread. She's an amazing animal communicator, and she specializes in helping you connect more deeply with your horse through intuition. This is amazing, and she shares some simple techniques that you can start applying right away to just improve on that bond and strengthen that relationship in ways you never thought possible. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Teal Shoup, and you're about to empower your equestrian life with this podcast. I'm an adult amateur rider, the CEO of global innovator Sterling Essentials, and I'm passionate about loving horses and being an equestrian on my own terms. If you're a wanting more rider but thinks our equestrian world can be better, is curious, is a little frustrated with the conventions of the equestrian industry, this podcast is for you. If you're looking for what empowers and builds you up as an equestrian rather than tears you down, this podcast is for you. Journey with me and my guests from all walks of equestrian life to hear the conversations, wisdom, and stories that will help you become an empowered equestrian. And when you're in an empowered equestrian, you become present in even more meaningful ways to yourself, your horse, and your equestrian community. And then together, we will help our equestrian community thrive. I'm glad you're here. All right. So, hey, everyone, here we are. And this is Teal speaking. And I have my wonderful friend, Joanna, with me. And I'm so excited about this episode. This is, of course, our inaugural episode. But I couldn't think of any better way to start it off by talking with Joanna. And I was thinking back the other day about, man, how did we even meet? I mean, it's been quite a few years now since we got connected. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's 10. ten? Yeah, it, it's yeah. Ten. Like <laughs> <laughs> It's like if I yeah. count on my fingers and toes, what do I come up with? <laughs> oh, no, I know. Yeah, t- about 10 years um, from riding together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Riding Warren. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just kind of being in the lesson program. You got to watch me, uh, <laughs> and I got to watch you sort through a couple different horses. Uh, exactly. I think, um, yeah, I mean, I was just at the time getting, I just moved back to the Pacific Northwest and was in the Oregon area and getting back into like hunt seat riding. I'd been actually doing saddle seat for a while. Oh. Um, and so I was a complete mess with the whole forward riding system obviously and then I remember meeting you and it was like you had it all together and you hadn't even been I think riding for a little while you'd had a break I think and we're just coming back and it was like man she's kicking patootie she's got it down that horse gets away with nothing and <laughs> like, I need to ride like her <laughs> oh that's very kind of you yeah I'd taken um a few like maybe five or six year break Mm-hmm. And, uh, but I had been training with that trainer before. So yeah. I like knew like the language, you know, changes with trainers and you're like, okay, I know what you're talking about. And she also <laughs> knew how to talk to me about things and like where to like, let me figure it out versus, yeah. you know, but, um, that's very kind of you. I appreciate that. I've been, I have been riding since I was like seven years old. So it's like, in my body. <laughs> yeah. It's in your and, cells. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that like probably a lot of your listeners can relate to like you get connected to it and it's like kind of like riding a bike, except for like, if you've taken a break, you get on and you're like leg activate and nothing's happening. And you're like, (laughs) please body. (laughs) I know what I'm supposed to do. It's just not working right now. (laughs) I'll think about it. Maybe yeah. then I'll twitch or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what's supposed to happen, but uh, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it was pretty, pretty great. And I think, you know, then we've been able to keep in touch over the years, even though we've changed barns, changed things in life. I mean, life, right? And all of that. But I remember, I mean, it was also the start of a great journey for you with getting your current horse, Yo-Yo. I yeah. I remember him. He's a he's a personality, folks. He's a he's a personality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that was such an interesting journey. And um, it actually speaks to, and he's one of the reasons, he's actually like 90% of the reason why I'm doing the work that I'm doing. Um, I had our trainer at the time had like gone out looking for horses and um, taken me to see this amazing, uh, I think it was a quarter horse actually, but built more like a thoroughbred. Mm -hmm. um, and so he was pretty lean, long legged for a quarter horse. And I sat on that horse and I was like, holy cow, this horse is reading my thoughts. This is so much fun. We, and, you know, in that mind space, as a competitive rider, you're like, we could win everything. <laughs> and I want, like, I can't believe we're connecting on this level. This is going to be so awesome. And so I left and I was like, I'm going to do whatever possible to buy this horse. And I was not able to buy him. Yeah. It just didn't work out. It kept falling apart anyway. And then, and then our trainer brings in Yo-Yo as a lesson <laughs> horse. She went down to Southern Oregon to get this horse out of a pasture in Eugene, <laughs> brings him in. And he's like, he, there, he's a lesson horse. He's not going to run away with anybody, but he's certainly getting away with everything with the kids. And since I didn't have a horse at the time, because this has been part of my history with this barn of like, here, Joanna, this is a naughty horse or this horse isn't working so well, ride it, help us fix it. You know, as a kid, they would put me on the naughty ponies or like whatever. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm totally into this. And it's funny because as an adult, like literally that hasn't changed. If there's like a naughty whatever, I'm like, please, like, I'll be there. Like, let me sit it. <laughs> so like, and he knew it. He knew it right away because I sat on him and we had our little, it was like a, a little bit of an argument. Not really, though. It was more of a test of like, are you serious? And will you have fun with me? Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if you were in that lesson. The first time I rode him, we literally did a lap around the arena with him bucking. Yep. I remember and I was going to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> Me like holding onto the reins and saddle, like laughing hysterically, just riding these bucks. Like this is, he's not trying to throw me. I mean, they were slow. You yeah. could see it in his ears. Like it's going to come again. <laughs> and it was just like, after that moment of like, okay, she can handle like whoever I'm going to be in this moment. It was like, all right, I love this horse. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then, and then like later on down the line, I was actually in, I was helping them and I did a, I was doing turnouts and, um, he just came up to me one day in the arena and I was like, I burst into tears. Mm -hmm. I was like, I know, I know Aww. this horse. I Aww. know him. Yeah. And like, so like heart horse connection right away. Yeah, and just sing. Like, yeah. Yeah. He's nothing like the horse that I was looking at. Absolutely polar opposite. Will not mm -hmm. give you anything for free, but that's what I want. That's actually sure. what I want. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, it's, it's such a, a cool story. And I think like there's like every writer wants that story. They want that little connection that grows into even bigger and beautiful and it's not just this physical but there's this this meeting at heart level mm -hmm. and at mind level mm -hmm. and I mean like some people call it soul I guess also you know yeah and um I think people look and look and look for that and try to find it and I think the harder they look though like the more they close it out because that's mm -hmm. the mind then getting in the way and I think that's also where then you come in with the beautiful teaching and and guiding that you do for riders and their horses to help open up those pathways thank you thank you yeah that that's um one of my favorite parts about doing the animal communication work is um, is really like matching horse and rider or being part of like the um, pre-purchase process. It's a little bit difficult now because I'm like so far out in bookings that it, <laughs> that. 
much, but a good like, problem to have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yay, we but, celebrate that. <laughs> but it like when I can do like the in-person horse show stuff, when a lot of horse buying and selling is happening is at the mm -hmm. shows. Um, <laughs> it's really cool to just see the energy of the horse, see the energy of the rider and, and, and be able to ask the horse, like, is this something you want? Like, is this, is the horse show life something you want? Cause there's just like humans, there's various degrees of that. There's a person who wants to go to like one or two horse shows a year, just cause it's fun. And there's a horse that matches that. Right. But if that person is convinced in some way to buy this upper level horse who has this huge competitive spirit, mm -hmm. they're never going to meet and they're never going to be happy. And, and by me, I mean like meet in the middle or come together during the ride. Right. Um, so I think that's like a, a hugely important part of it is like, what do you, and something just for riders to think about in general, like, what do you feel when you're with your horse? Mm -hmm. What, what does that feel like? And to set an intention around, like, I want to know my horse on a feeling level rather than just like a job or intuitive level, or I mean a job or like a logical level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, <clears throat> and that's something that, I mean, for me personally, I mean, I'm super analytical, think it through reasoning mind person. And that's been, I know in my ride over the years, a challenge to get into, like, it was like, stop thinking teal, just, just feel like, mm -hmm. well, how do I just feel like my mind is going 80 miles an hour and I'm thinking about the mechanics and the do this and the do that and the technique or just the care of the horse or all that stuff. And it was like, wow, how to take a breath and help riders hear that intuition. Because to me, I'm like, I don't know, maybe folks will disagree with this, but I'm coming into more and more of like intuition is our superpower. Totally. And we don't use it. And, it, it, and it's like cutting off part of our ourselves, this beautiful gift that is a wonderful help for us and our relationship with our horses and all areas of our life. And I'm like, how do I hear that? You know, I mean, I know kind of when I do, usually it's in the shower when I'm singing or listening to music or those things where I've disconnected mm -hmm. the monkey chatter in my brain. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so a couple, a couple points to what you were just talking about. I think that as riders, um, one of the things that is really important and one of the things that really develops a rider is their ability to feel like end of story the better you feel the more nuances you feel the more you can adjust and support your horse like it doesn't matter what discipline you're in that always helps and it always increases your abilities um, and that goes into like so many different layers but just on the topical competitive or non-competitive mm -hmm. like the more you feel the better the rider you are um and then that y your comment about intuition being a superpower I love it because we <laughs> we do we all have we all have this um so I'm going to use the word ability. I don't like that. I don't like to call it a superpower or a gift or an mm -hmm. ability or whatever because then it creates this boundary of like, oh, okay, this is something to achieve or something I have to do differently or something that's outside of my normal day-to-day -day life. And it's, that's exactly what I want to get away from in my education with people, because that's like your, your logical mind will take hold of that. Like, this is something special that is not for or not available all the time and it'll create all of those extra boundaries for you to be able to listen to it That's so it's just point. yeah it's just like your other senses you don't like you don't have to nobody has to take a class on this but we can hone our skills around it and just like you hone your math skills just like you hone your logic and reasoning. It's, it's simply that our culture doesn't really promote the intuitive response because it's not scientific or you can't really measure it. Where 
intuition comes from this knowing place. It is your sixth sense and it's more linked to the energetics. Um, conscious or science likes to call it consciousness. Spirituality likes to call it spirit, mm -hmm. whatever. It's right. energy that surrounds everyone. And that's like, when I finally kind of put that together, I think I spent a lot of my life and a lot of my riding in this, like, just tell me how to get better and I'll do it. Like, yeah. but just tell me, I want someone else to mm -hmm. tell me. And uh, give me the steps one, two, three, I'll do them. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm also super logical and analytical. So it took a while for me to like switch back. Thankfully I grew up around artists and so I also have like a balanced creative right. brain, um, which allows me to explain this better, I think. Um, but, oh gosh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. That's all of us. Um, but yeah. yeah, the energy of intuition mm. and basically, yeah. Yeah. So, so. So I had spent all this time wanting other people to tell me what to do or how to be or how to get better. Mm -hmm. And understanding that intuition is literally reading the energy around you, surrounding you. You have all of the answers you need at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. And so that empowerment is so crucial I think another aspect of that is really knowing and really believing that you are worthy of being empowered in that way. You don't need validation from some other source mm -hmm. to know what you know. You just don't because it's not a superpower. It's literally part of your senses. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's already all there. Mm -hmm. it's innate yeah um, yeah, yeah the, it's so it's so cool and especially I love what you're saying about you know you are worthy because I think that's that's lost a lot of times too it's always we're looking to achieve <clears throat> the next step the next thing the better the if we're competitive it's the ribbons the prizes the on and on and on or even just if we're not competitive it's just okay, I want to have a cleaner canter to park, you know, it, it's like, yeah. oh, I want to have a beautiful floaty extended trot and we're not going to be all choppy like a jackhammer today. I mean, it's even in those things and it's just, we're so caught on, um, if I don't get that X, Y, Z, then maybe I'm not so worthy. Mm. You know, maybe there's something wrong with me or I'm not seeing or all that. And it's like, no, it's just, it's in here, right? It's all inside and it's just tune in. Yeah. Yeah. I think the beautiful thing about horses and horseback riding, especially as it relates to intuition is that they are such intuitive, instinctual beings mm -hmm. and they are always in the present moment. And that is just like the biggest teaching that they have to offer us just as in like mm -hmm. teaching by example of like just be here in the moment with me and then we can get the thing that you're looking for or maybe you're not explaining it very well and in that moment you understand like oh okay like this is I'm being confusing here let's take a step back instead of punishing or pushing or driving you mm -hmm. know yeah and do you have, from what you've been working with recently, I'm sure some example to share of, you know, some of your more recent communications and what you're kind of hearing as an example of that? So, um, yeah, I, th I think one of the things that's really, that a lot of horses talk about is the, the power of play. Mm -hmm. And opening up that like, uh, right, because play puts you in the present moment. Play is about being like one on one, no expectations. Play doesn't have any boundaries or conditions. It's well, condition with a horse in play is like, please remember that I'm a human yeah. and you're don't like run me over. A thousand pounds. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but like outside of like safety, yeah. <laughs> play, play could be like groundwork. It could be liberty work. It could be natural horsemanship. It could be even learning a new discipline for a weekend. You know, it can be all kinds of different things or, or, um, I love to play with my horse with clicker training. Oh yeah. It's amazing. And that all of those things translate to you learning about your horse, them learning about you, but it gives you this opportunity to refine your communication in different ways. And it always translates to the riding mm -hmm. always. Um, because you're, you're, it's like not just one part of the communication. You're not just focused on riding in the arena or doing, you know, whatever your discipline, yeah. you're not just focused right there. You like develop it and deepen it. And that only just allows more and more to open up. Yeah. Um, and I just think that we like, we just, as equestrians, we have this remarkable um, opportunity with horses that, mm -hmm. that gives us all of these all of these chances to look more deeply into ourselves and into them that's amazing i i love how you said that too because i've i think i've thought of that you know obviously my my horse is my teacher mm -hmm. but it's um beyond that uh into they're gonna help me feel they're going to help me connect. They're not just going to teach me how to be, you know, a leader and partner or some physical 3D world skill. They're also, I don't know, I'm not coming up with the right words today, but it's like that it's that it's the other, right? Yeah. They're, they're teaching you how to listen. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> to yourself and listen words to are not my superpower <laughs> blah, blah, blah. but yeah and yeah listen just be quiet and listen yeah mm -hmm. it's um and it's not just for like the people you know that have the time or may not because I, I think some yeah. of these concepts can be like professionals or more competitive riders may push them aside. Like we, we're on a training schedule. We're on a this or that, or I have too many horses. I don't have time for that. Um, and yet it's still so important to those riders because the more that you listen to your horse, the more they feel heard and the more the feel that they can trust you in situations where they are not comfortable in. Mm -hmm. And that's just like safety um, for yeah. you, the horse and rider team to like, really make sure you're on the same page, but also just like in general, the happiness of your horse. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's huge. It's huge. Yeah. And then yeah. your happiness during the ride. So, yeah, I don't know. Joy. It sounds good to me. I mean, Joy. right. Like <laughs> what else is there at the end of the day yeah. with it all? If not that, yeah. um, yeah because everything else will fall away. Mm -hmm. if you're not there for joy, for that, the pleasure of it. Yeah. And yeah, what else is there? And <clears throat> no, that's pretty neat because I know I've really always had that challenge of, okay, how do, as an amateur, you know, you're balancing, okay, you got the work, the things, the life, the, all the stuff, and, and you have your, you know, your training schedule, your lesson schedule, and I think that was something I always loved in the programs I've been in and that, okay, I had my formal training times, like with instructor, we, you know, worked on all the things. And then I would have my hack days where mm -hmm. it was just me out tootle around, pick on whatever it is I felt my horse and I should work on that day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just groundwork. Sometimes we just went for a hand walk. Sometimes we worked on the tricky stuff that we weren't connecting really well on in the lessons. And we did some schooling with that. And, you know, sometimes it just meant a really wonderful session of just walking and grooming and eating grass and kind of just chit chatting with each other. Mm -hmm. you know? And I love that I've had that opportunity to have that extra bit of space and time with my horse where it wasn't just like, hop on, go ride. You're on the clock. Your 45 minutes is up. 
squeeze in all you can, get as many jumps in as you can, rush off. If you didn't get the skill, oh well, too bad. You'll do it next time. Like, yeah, it's I I can't imagine being in a super regimented system without having that that space in there. At least for me, like I I, I don't think I would have enjoyed ever in riding as much without that breathing room. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, even the, um, like, let's see here. So last September I talked to Emily Moffat's horse, mm -hmm. Kalinka, and, um, they wrote a horse and hound article on it, on the conversation. But one of the things that this mare was like, she was like, can you read to me? Like, Aww. can you sit outside your stall and read to me? Mm -hmm. And a couple of things came into connection with that it was just like this one-on-one -on -one time. Kalinka's like not another, uh, she didn't want physical affection, but she wanted Emily to be there just with her. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea, but Emily is an avid reader. So <laughs> Kalinka has seen Emily read and she's like, just read to me, be like, can I be part of this experience with you? Right. And um, it's not like the horses are going to get all of the words, although they do understand some, like whatever language, but it's more the intention or more the, the story. They're right. like, they're so instinctual. So they work on those energetics, those layers of, of feeling and being. And when you're in a story, you're painting all these pictures in your mind, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The animals can see that. Yeah. They get the feeling from that. So she literally get, got a story I just think it's a beautiful example of like, you don't like it time with your horse can be something you enjoy as well, as long as you're inviting them into that space. Yeah. So it, you know, like if you, if you need to spend more time with your horse, but you always already had you, excuse me, you have to get like a project done for mm -hmm. work or whatever. And you can do it at the barn, like just hanging out outside yeah. with your horse and working on that. They are probably going to see some imbalances in your energetic and stick in little ideas for you anyway. Yeah. I mean, I find the barn to be one of my most creative places. That's amazing. Yeah, totally. Totally. It just has a, so, well, for me too. It's a supportive energy, you know, mm. it really is. And, you know, I remember, so of course you remember Roro. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so for all of you listening, Ro was a, my second horse a um, number of years ago, and he wound up on stall rest for quite some time. And um, I remember, you know, when finally he got to go out in his little paddock and he couldn't go play with other horses. He wasn't getting turnout. He didn't have a whole ton of socialization going on. And I would go and just sit and cause it now it was finally like summer, I'd go sit out in his pasture with just me and a little chair or sit on the fence and just hang out. I wasn't even necessarily doing anything, but I just hang out for like half an hour and he just graze and he kind of walk by and come over and he'd say hi or he wander off. And it would be just like, we're just here for each other. You know, we're just here for each other. And I'm like, you know, healing energy to row for his, his injury, you know, so he's healing and he's healing me too, because it was, it was kind of a rough experience for me as well. Um, mm -hmm. And, and just feeling like, he needed that, but I did too, you know? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah, but he was a special horse. Absolutely. He, he was a special horse. He's a, he was a good boy. He taught me a lot. Yeah. Definitely. He was, he taught me a lot, but they all do, I think, in their each in little ways. And some I've had a harder time listening to than others. Mm. And that I think it's just also my growth. Um, of understanding what and how to open myself to hearing yeah, and being quiet and not letting all of my, um, you know, like all my, my goals and my big objectives getting in the way of just stopping and, and listening. Because, I mean, I, I think that 
you know, goals and objectives are a wonderful thing for a writer. Like it helps immensely, but there's so many paths to them. Mm -hmm. And I think our horse is going to help us get to those paths and find the right path. And it's not just us forcing the issue. Um, and, and that's especially like, I think something I was really learning with my most recent horse rabbit, um, because he was going through a lot of physical things also he was getting a little older getting some arthritis starting to have some sore some sore hooves and and other things going on and it was it was a really interesting journey with him of figuring out what's really happening with him and what's he feeling right now because he is such a love i mean he would give a million percent mm -hmm. and trying to understand like he still wants to have a job, but what does that job need to look like for him and how can he best support? Mm -hmm. and just, just listen to you. Just listen, you know, get mm -hmm. out of what everybody else is telling me to do. Mm -hmm. Get out of the expectations of the community and the world and every magazine or book you ever read about how to take care of your horse, set it aside. What do you feel? Yeah. Yeah. When I'm there giving him kisses on the nose, just get quiet. Like, what do I feel? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's like one of the, I think about intuition as like an umbrella around all of the different layers. So like the senses, our sight, our hearing, our touch, our taste, all of those have um, what are called clair, clair, mm -hmm skills attached to them so clairvoyance or audience that's like psychic sight or psychic hearing that kind of okay. thing yeah. intuition kind of covers them all so you have this um connection between all of them and you're allowing it to show up however it needs to show up so for you it could be like a physical feeling for somebody else it could be they could hear words or see images mm. um or um like a knowing in their body so it just like intuition just kind of doesn't discriminate. It, com it comes in a package and you might get one or two, you may get all of them, whatever. Um, so you have all of these opportunities to really connect and listen to the horses about what they want. And I think transition is a really great one and a really mm -hmm. important one to talk to and get the horses in perspective about. And um, because they have something to say. Yeah. And being able to listen to that and really find the space for it, I think is key. And your instinctual knowing that he, that there is something there for you to listen to outside of all of the educational mm -hmm. pieces that might be present is um, one of the foundational pieces to be able to listen. Like there is more than what something or someone else is teaching you. There just always is. Everything mm -hmm. is always different. It's always changing. Um, otherwise it wouldn't exist. Right. So uh, like nothing can actually be stagnant ever. Right. Um, so, and that's like, there's more than one way definitely to go about doing these things, but the, the, the ability to listen and get your horse's opinion and know that they have an opinion or they have desires and wants and you can be curious enough to listen to those things is huge. Instead of thinking like, okay, I just have to do what's best for the horse and I have to figure that out. Yeah. Like I think as riders, we get caught up in that. Okay, so mm -hmm. what's best for the horse? I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna do these things or get these people involved where in a lot of ways, like that's a lot of effort that you can just ask your horse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? of course. Yeah, so. yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah, I mean, it, let it be easy, right? You know, I mean, don't need to beat ourselves up or make stuff harder and harder and harder as we try to reason and think and plan it out and just, there's a partner there ready to share. Um, but I think too, for some folks, I mean, especially, um, you know, if 
some riders, you know, maybe they're not riding as often, or maybe they're in a lesson horse program and they're changing from lesson horse to lesson horse to lesson horse. They don't have like maybe that bonding time as if they're leasing or own a horse, for example, and they're with a single animal every day, or they're just new and coming to, to riding. What would you suggest for them to kind of get started with having their heart and their ears open a little bit to their to their horse? What would you say would be a, maybe a good step they should take or a little introductory effort? Yeah. Okay. Great question. I actually don't think that dealing with different animals is any kind of hindrance to your ability to listen because you just get a variety yeah. of types. Exactly. So like, and, and like being, being with one horse or one animal at the same time is like allowing you to deepen that connection. There's like no, there's no bad anywhere. Yeah. Um, so, but, but like, I think one of the things that we can all do even if you don't have a horse and you're listening to this, <laughs> um, get present in your body, right? Cause that's the number one thing that our horses want to teach us is get present in your body. Like really feel yourself do a body scan. I have maybe 10 or 15 little intuition exercises on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. Um, perfect. I'll point people to that. Yeah. Okay. But, perfect. Yeah. But, um, but when you're saying getting present, like Go but, just a, a little deeper to help people who maybe aren't as familiar mm -hmm. with what that means. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's about just taking a minute to at what it's what I call a body scan, go close your eyes. If, and, and as you get better with this, you don't need to close your eyes. You don't need a quiet space. You just need to kind of practice and kind of hone the skill a little bit. I do this every single morning mm -hmm. and I do it throughout the day. So I just, first thing I sit there and I feel the top of my head and I slowly move down my body, feeling my eyes, feeling my hair, feeling my mouth, just going through joints and muscles and yeah. um, my belly, my organs, my legs, my feet, just like feel what it feels like physically. And then I do a scan of feel what it feels like emotionally. Are there any places of constriction? Does, does my head feel emotionally different than my belly or my knees? And, and just take into account those different places. It's fun to keep a notebook. So you keep on recording and becoming aware. Yeah, yeah. And as you practice this, you'll get more and more aware of your different places. Then you can do it in the car as you arrive to the barn then go into your horse's stall or go hang out with your horse and do it again and see what's changed. Okay. And that is a connection to your horse that the horse is offering. So it could be how the horse feels in their body. It could be what they want you to be aware of in your body. But the emotional part is important to kind of ask intuitively. And, and when I say ask intuitively, it's not like you don't need to try. It's in fact the opposite of trying. It's about being curious and wondering. So the logical mind is out of the picture altogether. And it's that creative flow of like, what does my head feel like? It, it could feel like the color red. Great. Right. Don't judge that. Like just keep going <laughs> <laughs> and you'll get an idea. Some people do see colors around the body and after a while you'll be able to correlate. Okay. Well, this means I'm in this kind of space mm -hmm. uh, mentally or emotionally. Yeah. And it also could help you understand like, okay, well, when I, the, my horse feels blue today. So what does that mean? It means that he's looking for excitement or like when I come up to my horse and I feel like wiry energy. Okay. We should do a lunch before yeah. the ride today. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know, like yep. <laughs> and they're like all different ways of coming up and just being like, okay, so I don't have to um, like, like if you do that body scan and you put on your saddle and all of a sudden you're mm. uncomfortable in your own body. Great. You don't have to ride your horse to figure out that they're uncomfortable. You already know. So change the saddle, change the saddle pad. Maybe it's the bit, you know, mm -hmm. all of these body cues are so important. And the, the fun thing about the body scan is that you can do it at the grocery store. You can do it before you get to the checkout clerk and then do mm -hmm. it when you leave. Did you take any of their energy on? Right. Um, you feel different in that store. 
you could, I've pulled up to grocery stores and been like, mm -mm, no. not this one. Yep. And, and just been like, but this is the closest, one. you know, the logical mind is like, this is the closest one. Come on. You just right. need this one thing. You yep. don't need to. And my body will be like, no. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. so with that, listening to that, to the body as advice and being able to say like, okay, I don't know why, because intuition doesn't come up. It's not this booming voice, right? Mm -hmm. When I start first started in this work, I, I'm not in the animal communication, but working with my intuition years and years and years ago, I, w I had this concept of intuition that it would come into my mind and it would sound differently. You know, it wouldn't sound like it would have a different voice or a different tone or a different like volume. No, no, no. You know, like <laughs> yes. from on high and with trumpets. <laughs> yeah. So I was constantly looking for like, where is this new thing? Well, intuition only speaks to you the way that you speak to yourself. Mm -hmm. So it comes through thoughts. It literally feels like thoughts. And, and therein lies the, the, why I say listen to your body at first, the feeling of that, because that's going to help you understand and differentiate as you get more and more clarity around your intuition. Is this from a place of fear or is this from a place of wisdom? Yeah. And like figuring that out for yourself is key to continue to developing it. Um, another yeah. thing that I like to ask people to, or I encourage people to do is asking if it nourishes you and in relation to a horse like does this nourish our partnership yes or no and with that question and phrasing of it as nourishment mm -hmm. it's really easy for your body to be like yes it does no it doesn't and like super clear which is a lovely hack that i figured out that it's like <laughs> oh, okay like if I use the right words to yeah. ask these things intuitively, I get better answers. Yes. So it's about asking the right question. Quality of the as question. Well. Yeah. And our words matter, right? Yeah, yeah for sure. So, I mean, yeah. And I love you. I mean, this is a total segue, which we can get into um, another episode another day, but how you mentioned about intuition coming in the way that we speak to ourselves. And I also think like there's a little piece there of tie back to what we talked about earlier about being, we are already worthy. And mm -hmm. if we are loving and already nurturing and speaking to ourselves in that loving, nurturing, nourishing way, I've always thought it just makes it even that much more easier to hear, to mm -hmm. listen and to have that quality of question to ask um, mm -hmm. with ourselves and with everyone in our environment and our horses of what is serving, what is nourishing, what is supporting, mm -hmm. all of those beautiful mm -hmm. things. So yeah. yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really I mean, neat. You, you can also ask like, what is the right question? Like, what should I be wondering about and letting your mind kind of go into ideas and right. that, that is also your intuition. I think we, you know, intuition is so tied to consciousness, right. Or spirit, which is directly linked to your body. Mm -hmm. You're not in a physical form for no reason. And it's not your prisoner or your prison either. You're not mm -hmm. a prison to it. It's yeah. an active tool for you to use. And I think that's where kind of some spirituality stuff gets a little tricky mm -hmm. about like the body is this, some people call it this meat suit. And I'm like, oh my oh. God, please don't. Oh. <laughs> I think it's a tool, it's really a tool. <laughs> um, but again, with the words, use words that are yeah. your supportive loving words, you know, right, right. <laughs> but, but taking care of your body, like getting enough sleep, getting exercise, hydration, yes. eating well, eating like vital ingredients, like mm -hmm. being out in the sunshine, taking rests, like all yeah. of those things contribute to your body's well-being. And then therefore you have less resistance to the moment yeah. so you can hear your intuition more. Yeah. So it's like, it's all yeah. connected. It's, it's all, all connected. 
it's totally all connected. And I know for some folks that maybe they have <clears throat> a little, if, you know, if you're listening now and feeling a little resistance and that's okay. Like these ideas, they're not necessarily something everybody talks about all the time. It's not something we get in school. It's not something that it's like, oh, sit there and let's listen to our intuition. And they're like, no, get a paper and pencil and figure it out. But I, I think like what you were talking about with your example about pulling into a parking lot at the store and feeling like, nope, this isn't where I should shop today. And I, I would say like, for everyone listening, think of a time when you've gone somewhere or been in an environment or been in a space where whatever it was, it didn't feel quite right. Whether you felt uncomfortable or there was some other sensation or emotion or thought that maybe came in and you were like, nope, we're not going to be here. We're going to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's there. Whatever it's anyone even wants to to call it and it's there and I think it's 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 in all of us and we're born with it and it's our beautiful tool to use to serve ourselves serve our horses serve mm -hmm. the world be an amazing yeah. participant in this life <laughs> right yeah 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 so there's a scientist, his name is Dean Radin, mm. and he's like one of 50 in the world that is actually studying consciousness oh, that's and cool. his work is, oh, cool. But one of the experiments um, that they do is they have a participant sit in front of a screen mm. and they show flashes of images and they have them hooked up to all kinds of wires. And what the results are coming back with is that the body is responding to the Im Now the images are either peaceful images or aggressive images. Okay. And the body is responding to these images five seconds yes. before they appear on the screen, which is like your body knows. Yep. And the coolest thing about this is that it, it's not only one way, it's not just receptive, but it's also sending. And that's how like intuition transmutes in not really transmutes or develops into animal communication mm -hmm. is that once you develop this skill and practice it, you can send the information as right. well. And that's what, that's really what I do with the intuition mm -hmm. is like you can, but the, the coolest thing is that science is now like into it. So, so if people are hesitant now, he was talking, I was just reading a book of his recently, and he was talking about how like, there isn't because there's only so many in the world, like 50 scientists studying this, people are wondering if it's pseudoscience or like not, you know, whatever. Right. Yeah. And he was talking about the so normal social norms, that this is a step in the direction that is like pushing boundaries which I think is so cool. Yeah. So anyone who's attempting to do this work or looking into it, interested in it, um, not even do it, but be a part of it, have a communication session, um, go to an intuitive healer, an intuitive whoever to yeah. support you and your growth or you and your horse. I think mm -hmm. that like, you're literally on the edge, on the verge of something, you're getting it before other people do. And that comes with, sometimes it comes with a little bit of feedback, right? Some people are like, oh, I don't believe that. Or, I, you know, whatever, pushback. But let me, like the Wright brothers who were like, we're going to fly a plane. And how many people told them no? Exactly. Um, and and it, am I a Wright brother? Like, I'm not inventing anything. <laughs> Oh, like, yeah, so I'm not Joanna, going to I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just yeah. think that it's like a beautiful opportunity that we can always develop is that curiosity and that space yes. for openness yes. because it, it doesn't hurt us. And that phrase <laughs> curiosity killed the cat, I think is, is a lot around like this sense of control from yeah. the logical mind the logical mind and the ego, they're there to protect you. They're yeah. there to keep you safe. So a lot of people, when they're working with their intuition or they come up on these new things, that part of your mind is like, oh, this is new. This is uncharted territory. 
it's from when we were like walking on four legs. Like, it's like, that's no, I don't know what's around that bush yeah. is not safe. Right. And the so tiger's going to eat me, you know, am I going right. to, yeah, exactly. So it's mm-hmm. like this, it's a really old programming in our brain that it is actually not supportive for us anymore. And so to just learn the skill of saying, Hey brain, I hear you. Thank you so much for showing up but right now I'm going to try this new thing. Cause actually it's pretty safe here where I'm at. Like, yep. like an animal communication session, people will have resistance and I'm like, we're literally having a conversation. Yeah. Like nothing's going to happen to you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, totally. There's no, so all it is. It's is just like, why not try? brain? It, yeah. It's, you know, you get into the fundamentals of it with, you know, physics and energy, you know? Yeah. Um, Cause everything is energy. Um, yeah. And it's just, yeah, I think just if folks feel so led, just feel comfortable in a safe place and just start, you know, dabbling in. And, and as you suggested, yeah, starting with the body scan conversations with yourself, just opening up. And I mean, to me, and that's like my whole thing here that I want to serve our community and help empower equestrians is just that curiosity, that open-mindedness, some boldness, you know, mm-hmm. that I think that these are all things if we're stepping into as equestrians, just think how amazing our community can be, what that future can look like, what our horses are like and how they feel, respond, behave, and mm-hmm. how we treat them, how we treat each other within the community. Mm-hmm. And I think it just opens up, I mean, such an amazing, such an amazing world. I mean, all I see is then just beauty coming in the future if we go into these paths of empowerment. Yeah, yeah. Well, I Empowerment is one of my biggest things, like empower you to understand your own gut in relation to your horse. Um, I want to share a quick story about how quickly this can turn around someone's experience of their horse and how they feel heard. Um, one of my most favorite sessions was with this woman named Kate and her horse, Amani. And she came to me, we had a conversation um, talking to Amani and she, Kate just focused on like all of this love that she has for her horse, all like how much gratitude, da, 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 da. We move into a place of like, okay, well, yeah, Imani is a little spooky and I would never sell her. I couldn't sell her. Nobody would buy her, but I love her anyway. <laughs> and she's like a big, uh, like a big ring rider. I think okay. she's riding at like 130 or something okay, like that. Yeah. Uh, 130, 140, something. Um, anyway, so we have this conversation. She sends me a text the next day because we didn't focus on Imani's weaknesses. What we focused on was their connection and their strength together and what Kate was seeing in Imani. And she sends me a text and she says, we were just at this, I don't know, this little horse show in California. The winds were super strong. Jumps were literally bowling over. Jeez. <laughs> and she's riding the spooky horse, right? Yeah. The horse doesn't blink an eye. Wow. goes around perfectly <laughs> because she felt heard and she was like oh okay I don't need to do these funny things because I'm finally heard and I just um I think that's invaluable for us as equestrians but what I love most about this is that it gives us an opportunity opportunity to see it in ourselves which creates a little bit more curiosity and wonder it gives us connection to the planet and each other right. it like spills into every aspect right and uh I love it it is it's important yeah I think it is that they say um as within so without you know mm-hmm. what is inside us is then what we bring out into the world it's yeah. amazing so yeah Oh, this is such good stuff. I could talk about this all day. I, I think it's it's so, so amazing. And I know that after listening to this, a lot of folks are going to be very curious to learn more, <laughs> dip some toes in. Maybe they're already already in up to their 
their shoulders immersed <laughs> in the beauty of um, exploring their intuition and energy and connecting with their horse on these levels. And so if they want to chit chat with you, though, what mm -hmm. should they know and where should they go to connect with you? Sure. Okay. So Instagram, you can find me there and you'll link it in the notes. Yep. Um, Instagram has a lot of like different testimonials and intuition work that you can take a look at. It also has my booking link where you can book um, animal communication sessions. It has a little bit of information about what horse shows I'm available to. Um, you're welcome to go to my website itself, which is www at uh, the wild thread .com. Yep. <laughs> okay. and um, read a ton I have a lot of information there and you can email me uh, ask me questions I am working on a few classes one in California Ooh. one in Hudson New York um, okay. and I'll post those on my website when they get finalized and the structure is set but um, I do do like traveling um a lot of the ways that I do the work weekend workshops is that barn owners or trainers will contact me and have me come to their barn specifically um since I do work with part horse and riders now nobody has to have a horse or even animals to attend these sessions they're just and they're open to anyone right we already have it there's no levels here um so if you are a trainer or a barn owner, have a venue where you would want me to come teach the workshop at, happy to do that, email me. Um, Amazing. And then I do the in-person sessions as well. So I think I'm gonna be at Wilsonville um, at the end of June, the Wilsonville okay. horse show at the end of June. Honor Creek, yeah. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. So many opportunities and channels and options and avenues that love it. I mean you've made it so very accessible I think that's really cool yeah. um and it's really exciting to see you getting well great now that you know more travel is possible of course too seeing you expanding into other areas mm -hmm. of the country and some international trips potentially on the horizon you never know that'd be exciting oh yeah I actually Zimbabwe is next year well for, like, okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah brilliant it's really cool brilliant um oh and other also if people just wanted to work on their own intuition i do one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one trainings for that yes so. yeah for sure that's a great all of program. it all of it all of it and more very cool <laughs> well thank you joanna this is so special i'm so glad to chat with you and have the opportunity to share some of your lessons and wisdom with me to help in my learning, but also uh, take away for everyone listening as well. And just encourage folks to explore this and be open in mind and open in heart and to look into themselves and check all of this out. So thank you so much. This is beautiful. And I oh. look forward to when we get a chat again soon. I know. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. I really appreciate this. And I think that it's a a marvelous opportunity for the community i'm happy to answer any kind of questions outside of this as well so um but this is beautiful teal i love that you're going this route and opening this up for everyone it's so very supportive for everybody involved so all the way so around right. when yeah. all right thank, thank you, you. Thank you for listening to this entire podcast. If you're the kind of equestrian that likes to help others, then share this with your friends, fellow riders, and barn mates. You know, if you've found value, they will too. So please share on your social media channels. Also, if you've got questions or have a topic you'd like to hear about, I'm here to help. You can email me at customerservice at sterling-essentials.com and I may even use your idea on a future podcast episode. Also, if you'd like additional empowering content, connect with me on Instagram at Empowered Equestrian Podcast. Finally, I do have a personal request. If you would please leave a review wherever you listen, and a good one, by the way, I'd be really grateful. And through your assistance together, we can help our equestrian community thrive. Thank you and take care. <laughs>